God, Dr. Mercola, and then we'll go to Jennifer, um, Angel, uh, Nick, and Jordy, that'll be it for calls. Uh, you've been already holding, so I'll go to you. Dr. Joseph Mercola, if, if people know anything about health, anything about alternative wellness and news, they know about Dr. Mercola. He's probably the most successful you know, one name out there at, at putting out really good reference material uh, and also being very moderate about you know the claims and things he says. Uh, Mercola.com is the most visited uh, natural health website, averaging 14 million visitors monthly. I think it's more than that. His mission is to ignite and a transformation of our fatally flawed healthcare system and to inspire people to take control of their health. And he is a passionate about health and technology for most of his life, a doctor of uh, osteopathic medicine. Uh, he treated many thousands of patients uh, for over 20 years. In the mid-1990s, he integrated his passion for natural health uh, with modern technology via the Internet and developing the website Mercola.com to spread the word about natural ways to achieve optimal health. He has significant milestones in his mission to bring people practical solutions to their health problems. New York Times bestselling author, he's also voted the 2009 Ultimate Wellness Game Changer by the Huffington Post and has been featured in Time Magazine and everywhere else. I'm not going to go over it. Um, he joins us now to cover the waterfront, basically. Dr. Mercola, thanks for coming on on Halloween. Yeah, thanks for having me, Alex. I, I missed you out in uh, September at the Health Liberty Awards. Well, I would love to be able to go to stuff like that, but I'm always tied down here in the bunker. <laughs> you know, I've been trying to actually follow some of what I preach, and I've gotten a lot healthier and lost about all total in the last few years, about 50 pounds. But uh, I, I, I don't look as glowing as you or some of the other folks that really take care of themselves. Uh, let's, out of the gates, uh, talk about Ebola. Then I want to talk about the state of labeling. I know you helped spearhead the prop that almost passed in California. There's other props. Uh, oh, McDonald's. Washington pro and this year in Oregon and Colorado. Yeah, so there's a lot to cover. What is your researched expert take uh, on what's currently happening with Ebola? Well, uh, uh, my belief is that, uh, and no one knows for sure, but it's just my take on it, that it's a... Uh, an orchestrated effort to create a, a fear. You know, it's that's their common strategy, great fear to, to use as a justification to initiate a massive vaccination program. That's clearly the end game here. They're, uh, I mean, this, this, this is, disease is highly infectious, of course, but it's, it's not taking out a lot of people in the United States. There's only been two nurses who've been infected. There's people, other people who are infected. Uh, I mean, in the United States, there's other people who've been infected who are coming in from uh, Africa. Uh, so I, I don't think a lot of people are going to die here. I don't think it's a serious issue, but they're going to use it as leverage to initiate a massive vaccination campaign. That's clearly what they're doing, and they've got the vaccine lined up to come, well, several vaccines for December, January, February, right as this starts to peak in Africa. Looking at it, we know that uh, South Africa developed race-specific Ebola. They admit that. It was declassified in hearings back in the mid-90s. Uh, this Ebola clearly has mutated. It uh, lasts longer in the body. Uh, I think people are scared of it because if it gets here and then starts to go somewhat airborne, as the Army has said, uh, in colder weather it can live longer, then it could be a big problem. I, th I think it's the bleeding and the rest of it that scares people. But I agree with you. The government's response, the way they've acted, I think adds to the fear. Uh, how do you think they're going to try to roll out this forced vaccination program or this, this attempt to fear-monger people into doing it? I'm not too good at projecting the future, but I, I do know that uh, very confidently can tell your uh, listeners and viewers that uh, there's nothing to be afraid about here. For, just look at the facts. I mean, it definitely is a highly virulent virus that kills a large percentage of people in Africa. But look at the people it's killing. These are highly malnourished individuals, protein calorie malnutrition for the most part. When you, when you have a healthy individual, the, the mortality rate is going to be far less. And there's very simple ways to up improve your immune system. And the most potent would be, there's two, the two most potent ones would be improving your uh, optimizing your vitamin D levels, and the ideal way is through sun exposure or a tanning bed that's, that uh, will do it naturally. And, if, and then if that's not possible, as it will be in the winter months, then oral vitamin D certainly. But that, realize that that's clearly inferior to sun exposure. And then the, most, the second one would be 80%. 80% of your immune system, Alex, is in your gut your gut microbiome. So simple measures like stopping sugar, 
avoiding tap water that's not been filtered because the chlorine there will easily decimate your beneficial bacteria. Uh, or bathing in a shower with chlorinated water because you could absorb more chlorine from a hot shower than you can from drinking tap water. Uh, and then and then having a regular sources of beneficial bacteria. I, I'm a big fan of fermented foods because you can get massively large doses, uh, literally 10% of your gut microbiome population in just a few ounces. So, and you do all those together and your immune system is upregulated and you can basically eliminate just about any infection, whether it's Ebola, the, the flu, coughs or colds, you won't get sick. You don't need a lot of fancy stuff. And, it, and it, for, it, for whatever reason, you're stressed out, you're not sleeping well, you do get sick. There's simple measures that you can do that really address this, that you, do, that you don't have to rely on medications. You know, there's simple therapies like certainly uh, liposomal vitamin C, uh, colloidal silver, and, and even ozone therapy, which, uh, you know, I did a recent interview with Dr. Robert Rowan, who went to Sierra Leone, just got back last week to because the president of uh, Sierra Leone invited him to uh, the country to use ozone therapy to treat Ebola there. But then the, the drug companies got, got aware of it and they got kicked out last week, unfortunately. But he did, was able to train a lot of uh, physicians there and most likely some of the, the ozone therapy trials will start soon. Think how powerful these drug companies are that they can block colloidal silver, they can block ozone treatments, they can block things that are known in the government's own research to have massive effects, all because they want to be the saviors to sell the Ebola vaccine or the Ebola drugs. Uh, there's just got to be some way to break their monopoly of control. Well, there is a way. It's just a very clear way, and that is to take control of your health. Uh, that's clearly it, it, to, to be empowered to understand that you don't have to rely on expensive drugs or surgeries to address the, call, the causes of disease. That there, there are natural options. Many of them are inexpensive or virtually free that could radically re improve your ability to stay healthy and not rely on the, these, these alternatives. It's really bizarre world, Dr. Mercola. Yeah. That people like Cass Sunstein, the White House regulations are, could put a paper out six years ago saying we should restrict free speech and he, he gave an example of what was damaging speech and he said sunshine is not good for you <laughs> yeah and now the surgeon general who is a former dermatologist or still is a dermatologist but he's he's massively come against that and tried to integrate in, into the united states public health policy to avoid avoid the sun i mean it's just it's just it, it, so highly irrational well, they don't want us to be well. See, you're a classy, smart guy, and, and, and you're very um, conservative in your approach at, at not being hysterical. But come on. We've got governments with all their secret lethal tests. They've been caught over and over again. When they come out and say, don't get sun, you don't need any sun, when any old-fashioned doctor would say, you're sick, go get sun, when anybody can read the thousands of studies that you've got to get moderate sun or you'll basically get cancer, uh, they just... They don't. They want us sick, dying, or dead. I guess. Well, I'm not sure that's the ultimate motivation of most physicians. I think that you know, having been trained as a physician, I could. Uh, no, no, no. I don't experience. think the average one. I'm talking about the big policymakers. Oh, the I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, the, there's a there's definitely a a, a a consistent effort in that direction. That, but 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 the policy. Who, who controls the policymakers? You know, there's this revolving door of federal regulatory agencies that are bought out by lobbyists from these. Uh, large corporations, met frequently the drug companies, that, that dictate sure. these policies. Yeah, so for those that don't know, that's a great example about in Africa, not letting doctors go in with ozone systems. Look at uh, Codex Elementarius and the UN. It's run by the multinational corporations that run the UN board. Yeah, and it's been successfully implemented for a large measure in Europe. And thankfully, we've got tremendously great organizations like uh, American... Uh, ANH, I believe it is. I forget that what the acronym stands for, but they're using political lobbying, lobbying to prevent those uh, laws from being implemented in the United States. You cannot get. I mean, it's just insane. It's it's almost impossible to find a natural health care clinician in in England, or even find any supplement that's useful. I mean, they're limited to vitamin D to 400 units. You'd have to take. Uh, 10, 10, 10, 15, 20 a day 
to get the right dose. And let's be clear, they jack the price up, they cut the allowance down to almost nothing, and say, oh, you don't need iodine, oh, you don't need vitamin D, oh, you don't. Listen to these people that say you need vitamins, that you need minerals, that... Mm -hmm. But but they're lowering the RDA down and down and down. What's behind that? Well, I don't, I'm not aware that they're lowering specific RDAs, but you know those are just oh. guidelines. But the key the key is to understand that you need healthy food. And one of my big new passions is to encourage and inspire people to to really start growing their own food. If even if it's something as simple as sprouts, I mean, you could have a significant portion of your food intake from sprouts that you can graze from seed in about seven to 10 days. So, you know, it, it, it's organic, it's, it's really sure. healthy, it's, you know, it's bio. We'll stay there, Dr. Mercola, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna look it up, but I remember having some of the folks on that have been there reporting from Codex Alimentarius and seeing it, they are lobbying to continue to actually lower in Europe, I don't mean here, uh, but they've done it, lower what they're saying you can basically sell on the, uh, sell on the these store shelves. We'll be right back. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Dr. Mercola of Mercola.com is our guest. Stay with us. I have extended coverage for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours Monday night. Normally, InfoWars Nightly News is 30 minutes long, 7 o'clock Central. But then coming up, uh, we're going to probably go 6 p.m. until midnight or so with the election on Tuesday. Dr. Joseph Mercola is our guest, Mercola.com. And I wanted to get him on just because for my lay research, purified water, sunshine, uh, having enough vitamin D, getting enough sleep, uh, and then staying away from people, you know, if, if it starts spreading and have Ebola is the answer. But the media and the government's not saying that. They're saying we got a vaccine. And so if you have a bunch of people that aren't prepared and it was to start spreading, in these winter months when it spreads worse, then you can end up with a real problem uh, in this country. And we had already cut you off going to break. Um, they told me you were agreeing with my statement about Codex Alimentarius and the RDAs in Europe. Yeah, I thought you were referring to the decrease in the U.S. I wasn't aware of that, but I, I, I certainly would agree it's probably going on in Europe. Oh, yeah, Europe, Europe. Sure, sure. I mean, your point is... It's been done in Europe. We know what they want. Now they're pushing it here. I don't think the average American knows that they almost banned supplements outright back in the mid-1990s. They came very close. If it wasn't for Ron Paul and activists and others, we would be up the creek. They started the, the, the Shea Act, too. Yes. It was a big, important part. And now, now we've got the senator from Illinois, Dick Durbin, who's uh, really the most aggressive promoter. But fortunately, most of the other con congress con congressmen are don't uh, buy it and he hasn't been able to pass most of his legislation. Dr. Mercola, are we reaching a tipping point where the congressmen and senators and congresswomen and the governors, they're using supplements themselves. Uh, it's like McDonald's profits are down 33%, other fast foods way down. Are we starting to reach that tipping point where even if they don't have mandatory labeling, the market's just gonna do it? I think we're getting there, getting closer and closer, especially as the economy deteriorates and there's there's a demand for more accountability for the resources and to make sure that you're getting what you pay for, which we certainly don't in this country. We're spending $3 trillion a year and we've got miserable results. We're ranked 49th in the world for longevity. It's, it's just not a good return on our investment. So when the economy collapses, I believe it will at some point, it's, it's inevitable, then we're going to be facing some hard choices and they're going to be looking for solutions that work and these solutions that we promote work very clearly. That's right. That's why alternative health and wellness is becoming not the alternative, but becoming dominant in many sectors. The empire will strike back, but where the people go, they can't stop us. You know, you're not just a successful doctor. You're a successful businessman running your huge operation. I want to get your take on collapse being inevitable because I agree with that statement. What type of collapse, Dr. Mercola? I don't know what it will manifest, but you can't be tr printing trillions of dollars every year and expect not to have some consequence of that. Now, admittedly, almost all the central banks in the world are doing it too, but uh, at some point it's got to give up. I mean, they may keep it up for another three, five, ten years, but it's, at some point it's, it's going to collapse and there'll be severe uh, scenario, probably much more severe than the depression in the 30s in the U.S. I think that's going to be uh, look like a piece of cake compared to what's coming. I agree. 
and, and I don't say that because it's sensational for audiences. That's what every smart person I talk to says. It's what billionaires I know say. It's what the governments are digging in for while they try to get the public to be completely unaware of what's going on. I would think to stabilize things, they'd want to get the public ready and aware. Well, that would be counter to their purposes. I think for a large part, this is particular. This is planned. You know, they. Oh yes. They're they're very clever and sophisticated. They've got uh, lots of resources to achieve their goals. So this is part of the process. Absolutely. But, you know, I, I think it's better to focus on what we can do. And I noticed you mentioned earlier that you had lost fifty pounds, and I want to congratulate you on that. That's that's phenomenal. But you know, it, it, there's a actually a connection between your weight loss and the ability to improve your immune system, and that's to do with insulin resistance. And I'm writing a book next year. It'll be out in February called Effortless Healing. It should be the number one book published next year for health. Uh, we've got a, a lot of resources going behind it that to promote it. But it's the, the, one of the central cores that we teach is this whole issue with insulin resistance. And what you, would you like to know what the simplest and most effective way I've ever seen in 30 years of treating t tens of thousands of patients to, re to reverse insulin resistance? I want to know when we come back. And I can't wait okay. to have you on when that book comes out. I don't want to carry it. Dr. Joseph Mercola is our guest, and then I want to give him the floor when we come back for a while to talk about what he thinks is most important, because I can throw out questions all day. But speaking of those questions, we're going to go to your questions, just throw out your election point, and then let's get your health point uh, when we come back. Frago, Jennifer, Nick, Jordy, and others, we're going to come back after this break with Dr. Mercola. I'm Alex Jones. Breaking news at Infowars.com. I forgot to tell you about we're it. We're on the Dr. Joseph Mercola is our guest. We've had more than 20 contests. One contest was for $100,000 and was hugely successful. <laughs> this one, because our budget's a little tighter, is $7,500. $5,000 $5, first place, $1,000 second place, $500 third place. I always buy it off more than I can chew. Every time we've had a contest, I announce the date that I'm going to be announcing the winner. I always push it back a week. One time, we had something like 600 good entries. And I had the pleasure of getting to watch them all. And then we wanted to promote them, tweet them, put them on Facebook, put them on Infowars.com. We got over 100 good ones this time, only with a two-week notice. You know, other contests have gone for two, three months before. That's when we get 600, 700 entries. 500, 600 of them being really good. This is the Obola, tying Obama's non-response to Ebola to the tyranny of socialism and collectivism. Hashtag tyranny is the disease. Help expose it. Today was the day I was supposed to announce the winners. We've still got more contest entries to post this weekend and next week. I still have not seen all the entries. I've seen about 60 or 70 of them. I've got to go watch 30 or 40 more I haven't looked at. I've got to go back and look at the top 10 again. So I'm going to spend a couple hours this weekend, a couple hours next week, trying to judge the winner. I get feedback from the crew that's been watching them. But all of you are winners because you're exposing the tyranny. You're out there being political activists. That's what it's all about. Look, one movie, Supersize Me, helped trigger a revolution that was already under the surface to revolutionize uh, and, and really turn the tide against the poison, uh, the additives, the, the plasticizers, the GMOs, the chemicals in the food. And we still aren't winning, but we're, we're coming from behind and are set to start winning. People exposed aspartame is bad. They just changed the name and put it in almost every gum and candy out there, including sugared. I tell people, you know, your, your, your sugar gum has aspartame. No, it doesn't. It's sugar gum. Go, friends, family, you name it. Go, wow, you're right. That stuff makes you go blind. Pro toothpaste hashtag hijacked by anti-fluoride activists. We launched this. InfoWars put out a call to hijack uh, hashtag sweet Halloween to inform parents about the dangers of fluoridated toothpaste. This was put out uh, by Crest Corporation, or I guess Procter & Gamble, or whoever owns Crest. I think it's Procter & Gamble. I'm going from memory. Uh, and we're just exposing the Harvard studies, the hundreds of other. It's actually thousands, but I say hundreds because it sounds unbelievable. Nothing's been studied like fluoride and lead and mercury and things like that. I mean, just been studied for hundreds of years. They know what fluoride does. And so we've hijacked it. It's been taken over. Uh, one of the contest entries uh, on Obama got picked up by newspapers uh, around the country, and one of them that picked it up was Egan News. Man in Obama mask and hazmat suit hangs Ebola, Ebola posters across Chicago. And here it is in the major newspaper, DrudgeReport.com, picked up the video, and now it's gone viral. See, that's 
how it works, ladies and gentlemen. So everybody's a winner. I don't know who's going to be the three winners. We'll let you know very soon. And please don't forget, if you need cutting-edge vitamins, minerals, supplements, there's a lot of great places out there. Mercola.com, great products and, and just sensible, real reviews. Uh, we try to be at that very same high standard and just go with the facts. Uh, InfoWarsLife.com, the Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, the Super Mel Vitality, uh, the Oxy Powder from Global Healing Center that just, well, you've heard the rave reviews. We can't keep it on the shelves and it's about to sell out uh, because it's word of mouth. I only want to bring out supplement products that blow people away. Now, I want to get into fluoride briefly with Dr. Mercola and then some phone calls, but I want to give him the floor to talk about whatever's front and center. But you were getting into diabetes going epidemic up in some statistics in Hispanics up 3,000%. They're saying that they're set to have 60, 70% of Hispanics by 2025. They're talking about half the public perhaps having type 2 diabetes. Suddenly type 1 that's supposedly genetic is popping up in people later in life. You're a big expert on this, Dr. Mercola. You were getting into it. They never ask, why is diabetes up? They always say, what's the cure? Well, wouldn't the cure be not doing what's causing it to go epidemic? So A, what's making it go epidemic or pandemic, I think's the word, correct me if I'm wrong. And then B, what are the secrets to it? I mean, how how can people stop from getting it and what's been shown to be promising? Uh, well, Alex, it's not just diabetes, it's obesity, it's cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's. These are all have at their central core insulin resistance. So the most effective way I've ever found clinically to address it is the timing of your food, the, the quality and the and the type of food you eat is important too, but the timing is massively important. Let's start with breakfast. You, we all know that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, right? Wrong. It's a myth. Who created it? The cereal companies. More important than any single meal is how many hours you eat in any single day. Because not only do we eat the wrong food, but for many of us, many of us the only time we don't eat is when we sleep. And if you think about it, our ancestors, they never had access to a grocery store 24-7. Many of our ancestors were lucky if they ate three times a week. Most of us eat three times a day and snacks in between. So our genes and metabolism are optimized for more sporadic, intermittent meals. You know, basically feast or famine. I saw some of those studies interrupt you. That's why they think Mesoamericans, who are really land bridge Asians that came over, are, are, are getting hit so hard because they really survived on almost nothing and were super yeah. tough and hardy. But you give somebody with those genetics uh, a ton of food, I mean, boy, they're going to be dead in a hammer really quick. Yeah, so that, that is the key. See, we're basically, most of us are feasting 24-7 and uh, we, ne we just don't go into the uh, fast mode. And the fast mode doesn't have to be for long periods of time, but if we do it regularly, there's a number of ways to accomplish this. And the, the most effective way that I found is, and you only need to do this as, as long as the insulin resistance persists. And how do you know? You either take a fasting blood insulin level, your weight normalizes, uh, you don't have diabetes, or you're not taking a statin drug. So if those things disappear, you don't have to do this. But until those things disappear, do the 3 8 Three, stop eating at least three hours before you go to bed, sleep eight hours, and start eating at least three hours later than you do now. And then when that happens, magic occurs. The, the, you'll be less hungry, you lose your cravings. That's now happened. It's just the most, the most amazing thing. It's just absolutely it's incredible. It's incredible. I did a juice cleanse about four months ago, and, and that and, and uh, pure iodine and eating healthier. All of a sudden, I, I'm not even doing what I was doing before, and the weight is just coming off exponentially. Yeah, it's, it's just massively important. So it's just the timing. If you restrict your eating window to six to eight hours a day until the insulin resistance disappears, it's amazing. You know, we had mentioned our viewers that we, we actually have 10 million unique visitors to our site a month. And one of our visitors uh, had mentioned that she had tried this for about a month she, and she used a six hour eating window. And the first day her cravings disappear with the, what, what she couldn't believe it. And what was most impressive is that she only had that similar result previously using amphetamines. That's how profoundly effective the appetite suppressant effect is. And, and, it, you, and you're not buying anything. You're just using the timing well, of your, your uh, eating to replicate, uh, to, to basically jumpstart your ability to start burning fat.
Well, that's the old Hollywood secret that I've been told by so many people there, models, you name it, famous actors. They've all told me, Alex, the key, because back then I was fat, I mean, not super fat, but overweight. They say, man, you'll lose that weight. Don't ever eat after the sun goes down. And that's just well known by models, you name it, never eat after the sun goes down. Yeah. That's a good strategy. So, and if you do that and you get your insulin resistance under control, then you don't have to worry about infections because you'll improve your insulin resistance, but you also improve your gut microbiome. And interestingly, you know, you talked about the artificial sweeteners like aspartame, which I think we're making major progress on. But they, there's scientists that figured out, they published a study last month in Nature. How, we figured out how one of the major mechanisms how aspartame actually causes you to gain weight. It well, I remember that. you being on my show like 15 years ago and, 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 and a medical doctor as well, uh, Dr. Blaylock, saying we have evidence that aspartame, stuff in Diet Coke, makes you fat. Now, suddenly, CBS News headline, diet sodas make you fat. Go ahead, tell us about that. Well, the way the, the mechanism, the reason how it makes you fat, we didn't know until like a few months ago, is that it alters your microbiome, your gut microbiome for the worse. You get the wrong bacteria growing there, which causes you to gain weight. So it's all about improving your gut flora and decreasing the insulin resistance. You get those one, two punches and there's almost no disease that you can't turn around. It's so profoundly effective. Now, clearly you need a health coach to fine tune some of the more, more complex diseases. But, you know, if you got, you got to get the basics down. You know, I, I'm a big fan of the Bulls when they had Michael Jordan and, and he was a great superstar. But, you know, they, one of the reasons they were so good is because of their coach. Uh, uh, who, who basically grill them on the basics. And if you don't do the foundations, uh, any fancy supplement in the world is not going to help you. You've got to get the foundations right. You know, staying away from sugar, uh, of artificial sweeteners, chlorinated water, getting enough sleep. You know, it's, it's mundane, but it really does work. It's very powerful. And getting the insulin resistance resolved by, by something like intermittent fasting. So they basically found the way to shut off the fat gene. Well, it's not the fat gene. What what happens is when we eat all these 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 excess carbohydrates and we're eating regularly, we're not fasting. Then th that builds up uh, enzymes that basically suppress our body's ability to produce something like lipase, which which helps burn our fat. So we don't. No, no, I understand that, but I'm fat. saying it's in the genetics that we're not designed to do this. So you turn off the fat gene, even though it's not really a fat gene, by getting yeah. in line with your genes. Right. Yeah. It's, it's well, let me ask you support. this then: What would you call what would you call this then? This this huge scientific discovery. Well, the general term is called intermittent fasting in the literature. I call it effortless eating because it's it truly is effortless, Alice. I've never seen anything so, so magical. Once once you get that insulin resistance resolved, the hunger cravings disappear. The only time you're hungry is when you need to eat. You don't have these cravings for sugar or junk food; they disappear. Because when you're eating too much, you get unbalanced, and now you well, just keep eat, eat, eating. Well, no, because your body requires, because you can't burn fat, you have to burn sugar. So you only have about 12 hours of sugar. So as you start to get low on your sugar, you have to replete that with your plate, your glycogen stores. And that, and, uh, so scientists discover the secret of fat loss and health. Yeah, well, it's not, not a one specific scientist, but there's an emerging consensus among a large number of professionals that this is the most effective way to, to achieve that. Well, sure, that's in the literature. It, it's just amazing that everything that the, the, the big corporations do is the opposite of this. And it shows they've known this all along. Going back to Edward Bernays and the rest of it, I mean, they've been engineering yeah. us to be unhealthy. Why do you think that is? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with Bernays, and I would agree with uh, your position and what he's, he, he's doing. But I don't know that they really understand this. I mean, just like most of these healthcare professionals, they're bu they're bu buying the hook, line, and sinker themselves for their for their, not only personally but for their their fa their own family. They just want to sell no matter what, and even if it kills their own kids. Well, it's because they believe it. They truly believe it. I, I think that they, they are, it's not a conspiracy that they've got these guys aligned with them. They, they've convinced them so cleverly and with such sophisticated tools and techniques like, like Bernay and, you know, these, they, they, they have some of the most sophisticated uh, marketing tools available ever known to humankind. So they're using them at, and they, they can afford them. So they, they use them at, uh, liberally to, to to position or to advance their positions, essentially. Well, I want to get into the latest health news with you. It's all on Mercola.com, but let's take a few calls because they have been holding patiently. Sure. Uh, Frogo, I don't know if that's a hobbit or what, but they're calling from England. Welcome to the airwaves. You're on the air with Dr. Mercola. I know you had a comment about the election as well. Go ahead. 
Hi, Alex. No, last time I checked, I'm not a hobbit. <laughs> uh, right then. Oh, uh, here in England, um, council elections are regarded as a weather vane for general elections. Um, the sophology experts um, then spend hours, much of it in television studios, analysing what the 20% turnout did and uh, making projections for the real thing. Um, I think the principle is perfectly transferable to everywhere that has this election game. So this election that's coming up uh, can be taken as a weather vane of the presidential election in like two years. Uh, my expectation is um, a general victory for the Republic creeps. And I figure that the New World Order has already decided that the next president should be a Republicanoid um, because the Democratic brand is worn out, which was inevitable. Long, long ago, um, there was George Walker Bush, president. And, uh, let's see, he won the election by, I think it was five votes to four which caused a lot of consternation um, all over the planet, not just locally. Uh, then over, well, let's see, over the next eight years, he proceeded to be the piece of scum that anyone who had um, looked Sure, and then the Savior time, Obama but, comes in and then a new Savior, but now the Tea Party is being yeah. targeted by the Republicans and Democrats. I want to get Dr. Mercola's take on that, but you I want yours showing, just like you, Kip, or something, they are genuinely, you sound like Nigel Farage, by the way, caller. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so, so you do. So, he's been on the show many times. <laughs> Anyways, I don't drink as much. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and finish your point. It's just that can we see a revolution through both parties to reform each party or what's going to happen? I want to get your brief take on that caller from England, Frogo, and I want to get our, our doctor friend's Frogo, take on it. but who's counting? Well, basically, my position is kick the bombs out. Um, vote for Tea Party candidates wherever possible, and where it's not possible, ah, just don't take part in the game because it is a game. Or run yourself. Let me get Dr. Mercola's take or on that. Or run yourself, yes. Sure. Dr. Mercola... Again, I don't lionize the Republicans or the Democrats, but the Democrats have really been on mock speed right now, using the fact that they could pacify the left to power grab. What do you make of these elections? And they're saying it, it could be a political realignment. They're saying it could be the biggest landslide ever is what polls are showing against Democrats. Yeah, I, I really don't focus on that too much because there's so many other areas. Other, the only concentration I do is that how it affects the health components, which would be if we've got GMO labeling bills in Oregon and Colorado this year, and there's a strong probability will be effective. Uh, they did pass without uh, in Virginia or earlier this year. So we have one state that's already passed the labeling bill, and of course they're being sued uh, by uh, Monsanto and others. So, you know, I think that the direct ballot initiative is a really powerful tool that we're utilizing out west. You can't do it really. Yeah, bring us up to speed on that. Talk about the, the state of that, because the fact that Monsanto and others would spend tens of millions of dollars per state in some cases so that we don't know that their BT corn is in it. I mean, how outrageous is that, that a car company wouldn't want their label on the car? I mean, that tells you right there. That is such fraud in my view. That is you know, such fraud in my view that they would lobby so that I couldn't know their stuff is in the food. Yeah, I was the primary donor for the California initiative uh, two years ago, and then we've been heavily supporting the Washington and Oregon ones also. But the, the central issue is that we've lost California and Washington. Uh, there's a good possibility that we'll win in Oregon. But even though we've lost that battle, we're winning the war, because you may not be aware of it, but the, the, there's a clear demand when you go to the store for non-GMO products. Even at Walmart and Target. Even at Walmart and Target. The, it exceeds the demand for organic. Yes. Within literally two years, we changed the consciousness of yes. the public to understand that non-GMO is more important than organic. In fact, when I was thinking about trying to get you on a few weeks ago, that's why I wanted you on, was about Ebola, to get your take on it, but also to talk about... 
words cannot describe how massive your work and all the millions of activists work and our work, everybody. This is a big win here that I go to Target or even a Walmart now and it's non-GMO, organic, uh, Heinz ketchup, everything is converting to it, even though a lot of times it isn't pure organic and there's some cheating right. going on. The fact is we're winning the hearts and minds. McDonald's yeah. is imploding. This, that, that's why I've said I think we're making the sea change and the fact that yeah. I think, I mean, I mean did you guys get like a million bucks? It that be happened because of what we did in California. Everyone was so sad that we lost. We narrowly lost just because, you know, they, they've thrown in $100 million to, 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 to basically buy political ads and lie. You know, it's legal to lie in these things. They outright lie and they're not arrested for it. So that, that's how they win. They just flood the media. But if it wasn't for California, you wouldn't see those changes. That was only two years, Alex. So I think there's great hope. You know, we're utilizing the direct ballot initiative, which exists within many, many states, I think somewhere between 30 and 40 states. And we're utilizing that and making massive victories. And we cannot overstate how big this is and how central you were to that. How much did you end up giving to it? What, the California initiative? Yes. Uh, basically somewhere between one and two million. I think it's probably closer to two. And then was it that like most of the money to counter the hundred million? No, no, the collectively they rated, no, the hundred million was what they've donated for all the campaigns together. Uh, in California, I think it, we raised 10 million totally for the pro labeling. Uh, campaign and the, they label they because California is a massive state, so of course there are more funding required. Uh, the opposition raised fifty million, so they, they outspent us five to one. That's right. But the good news is, and, and I'll say it, I saw the polls. I think there was fraud in yeah. both states. But but I, I know you don't want to go there. But let's just say this: you lost the battle, but you're winning the war. We lost the battle, winning the war because it raised the consciousness and the awareness that I'm not allowed to know there's GMO. Well, you know what, then I'm going to buy from the companies that openly want to tell me, because if you're not telling me that you don't have it, then I know you've got it. Yeah, that's that's basically the key. You know, so we make the with these small victories, you know, it's it is a war. So there's going to be battles and you know, not, we got another battle coming up and it's great if we win them because it accelerates the process. We don't have to delay it as long, but it's still a raising consciousness of the public because the media picks up and we get all I mean, we put in 10 million dollars. We probably got 100, 500 million dollars worth of media exposure. More than that. And and again, you spearheaded that Dr. Mercola. I mean, I do want to give you it the credit good investment. It was it was a tremendous return on investment. Much better than the 3 trillion we're spending on healthcare, I can tell you that. That's right. But it's to feel good you're another example of what one man can do then reaching out to others building your organization doing all these interviews writing all your articles uh, doing you know it, it's so amazing to know that we can win if we just believe we can and start taking action but it's not going to happen overnight no, and the action has to be concerted and very strategic. I mean, we're playing against very clever and sophisticated forces. I mean, they, they know what they're doing. So you just can't go in there willy-nilly. And, you know, you need concerted efforts. And you need to align with like-minded individuals. But you have to have a strategy at the higher levels. You just can't. And that's where, that's where a lot of mistakes are made because people have the good intent, but they don't have a powerful strategy. Fortunately, you know, we're, we've, we've identified some really effective strate strategists to help us in the campaign. I agree. We're, we're going to uh, let you go here in a few minutes. We're going to go into overdrive and talk to Nick in California listening on KOMY 1340, Jennifer, Jordy, and a few others. But Dr. Mercola, in the few minutes we've got left here, I do see not just an economic collapse coming, but a total collapse in confidence in the political system. Uh, Gallup shows a 7% approval rating for Congress. They can have cult of personalities like Obama, but when they don't deliver, they go from icon to scoundrel pretty much overnight. And I see that compacting, uh, accelerating. Um, I don't think the establishment's gonna be able to continue uh, on the way they are. What do you see in the future? Well, I see an, an, an inevitable collapse. I and mean, to me, there's no, there's no other option really it's just, but there's there's no way to me it's impossible to predict that i mean it might not be for 50 years it might be two generations later it might be 100 years or it could be next year i have no idea but i just know that the the, the trajectory on is not healthy and there's just no they're not going to give up their power they just aren't until there's a collapse there's just no there's just no way but we we we, sure. you know, we can accelerate that process and it's going to be good you know it's just like an alcoholic goes through uh 
he has to hit the gutter before he recovers and free that's what's going to be required here we have to have some suffer some severe pain before everyone's willing to to make the necessary changes to help the, sure. the whole process recover well it's like two more studies out this week in prestigious journals that it's true uh, bt gmo corn is making pigs have bleeding intestines and there's mm -hmm. been a double fold plus increase of kids being brought into emergency rooms with irritable bowel and leaky gut uh, and they've directly linked it to the BT. Well, no kidding, it kills the bugs that eat it. What do you think it's gonna do when it hits us? And, and what does Bill Gates and Monsanto and all these people think they're gonna do once more and more of this comes out, and not just them, all the other GMO companies and people, I just don't know how they think they're gonna get away with this. Well, you know, I would not underestimate their resources. I mean, they've got incredible wealth and sophisticated strategies to, to counter things. So they're going to be they're going to do just fine. And they're not, you know, so we just have to look at ourselves, basically take control of our own health, not rely on these drugs and medicines, surgeries, just to do simple things, avoid sugar, use intermittent set fasting, get plenty of sunshine, uh, safe tanning. You know, these are strategies that we can each and every So we change create. ourselves and pull ourselves out of their right. system one step at a time. Yes, and then lead by example. Show your friends and relatives that you don't have to accept the the, the hook, line, and sinker with the what the media is telling them, and that there are there are healthy options that are really inexpensive. Well, I tell you, thank God for you, Dr. Joseph Mercola, Mercola com. Have a great weekend, a safe uh, All Hallows Eve, and we appreciate you. All right. Well, thanks for having me, Alex. Appreciate you and all you're doing, too. Thank you. Amazing individual right there. And I tell you, he doesn't brag. He has done so much with his team and his supporters. And we know our listeners are his supporters and viewers. He does a lot of media as well. Check it out, Mercola.com. Check us out, Infowars.com. Uh, Drudge Report, linked to our article. I never got to it. It's on the right-hand side of Drudge. It's red-linked on Infowars.com. CDC to purchase body bags in anticipation of more Ebola deaths. And they just sent a quarter million body bags to Dallas. Federal agency issues services sought notice for PPE supplies. We'll be back in just a minute in Overdrive, Infowars.com, forward slash show. You are we'll see you this Sunday, GCN. 4 to 6 p.m. Central on GCN. GCNlive.com today. GCNlive.com today.